an area renowned for its beautiful landscapes and fruit exports. There are hundreds of men and women who work these lands that contribute largely to the country's economy. But these workers allege that all they get in return is poor treatment and poor living conditions. Dilapidated houses, limited electricity, dirty pit latrines have all become a norm here. In if you have to work in an area where you rain wet the whole day, then you must do it. Until he says so, you can come out. He is rude. He has no way of speaking to a person. Say now you need leave because you are sick. He will say, stay at home and never come back. It is so hard working under this man. Everything he says goes. You can't talk back to him. He mistreats us with electricity as well as because we don't understand the readings. If he says it is 400 or 500 a fortnight, then that is what you must pay. They chased me away with a lawyer. I don't even know if he really was a lawyer. When I brought the proof that I was in human stop to make an ID for my son, they called the lawyer again and they chased me off the farm. There was no package or payment or anything to show for the fact that I worked there for 18 years. The managing director of the farm, Johan Kratzinger, says some of these issues were never reported to the housing committee that deals with such. The farm isn't really in a position to spend a lot of money. On the other side, it's also their homes. How it looks there is their own doing. I can't be kept responsible if they destroy their place. So we try to do what we can from outside, but it's their homes. Even if they don't work here anymore, they can continue to live in the houses. I can't put them out. If they do move out, we break down the homes because we don't want people living here anymore. Labour experts say there is no obligation for farm owners to provide housing for their workers. If they do, however, certain expectations must be met. The house or the dwelling where the farm worker would be occupying, it must have a durable roof and it must be waterproof. The house must also have glass windows which can be opened to the extent that in that farm there's electricity, there must be electricity in that house, which means now if there's electricity inside the house, it must be there if the infrastructure, infrastructure allows. Then the other point which I have to mention is that uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, ablution facilities, the requirement in terms of that item is that uh, there must be a flush toilet or a pit latrine. And it, if it's not inside the house, it must be within a close proximity once again. And the, I think I've mentioned the issue of safe water, and I'll, if I didn't, I'll admit that there must be safe water. And now, what is also important is that the determination does also make reference to the size of the house. It must be at least 30 square meters. Mm. These shareholders also claim to have only received a dividend of 500 rand once in 2014. The company must comply with the provisions of the Companies Act. Basically, solvency and liquidity, and that is the responsibility of the board of directors of the company. Solvency means you must have enough assets to pay your debts. Okay, so that is the first thing. If your debts are more than your assets, then you have a problem. The other requirement, and you must meet both requirements, is you, the company as an entity must be able to pay its debts as they become due in the ordinary course of business. Mm. So the, you must have that liquidity. If you can't meet that particular requirement, then, um, then you can't declare a dividend. Mm. Kretzinger says it is difficult to maintain the houses on the farm as it costs a lot of money. He says the farm prefers that workers live off-site in neighbouring towns. Kim Daniels, SBC News, in the Langkloof.